to greet the brethren that are in the church and receiving this broadcast with the peace of the Lord Jesus. We are here, my brethren, to broadcast the Sunday School of the Church Maranatha, which we do every morning, Sunday morning, at this time, to our church. And today we are here, being, um, as we have already mentioned to the brethren, we are going to give continuity and sequence to the subject that has been for us a great source of revelations and depth in the word of the Lord and has brought the church as well to great church to wonderful results even re regarding salvation of lives and spiritual growth for the church and that's why the Holy Spirit has guided us towards this direction and we will uh, this morning once again give continuity to the subject about the revelation of the book of Re revelations and the brother had been uh, uh, got instructed to read the word of the Lord in chapter 2 and chapter 3 of uh, Revelations and also to read the parables of Matthew chapter 13 and also the expression of, uh, of uh, prophet Isaiah on chapter 2 uh, chapter 11 verse 2 so we can study this morning so um, I we uh, we didn't give the answer for the last question that was given the last Sunday school that is related to the subject to our subject today. So the question was in the vision of John, what was the position that John describes Jesus, the Lord Jesus in relation to the seven lampstands and in relation to the seven stars? So this question is placed here to the brethren. It was the last question for the lesson of the school, so the brethren may identify in a verse in the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 20. I'm sure the, the brethren have already the Bible open in order to identify here the position that John describes, right, the Lord Jesus in relation to the seven lampstands and in relation to the seven stars. So the brethren for sure may have already opened the Bible and examined. So now we're going to uh, uh, give to you the answer and in order for us to give you the answer we are now going to we are now going to invite the brethren from the church to stand up so we can read together the book of revelations chapter chapter 1 verse 13 and verse 16 where those the answers are and the brethren can now examine in the churches and chapter 1 Let's go to verse 13 and verse 16, where there we have there the uh, information regarding uh, our answer. So verse 13, we ask the brethren from the church to stand up so we can read together. And the writing, my brethren, of these two verses are um, uh, the reason is that we are upon the promise of the Lord that when we open the word of the Lord and we open the book of Revelations to read there's a promise of blessing to those that read to those that hear the words of the prophecy we we are interested in the words of the prophecy and to those that keep those words so we are here and the, the presence of the book in the revelation of the Holy Spirit so the prophetic part of the book. So let us read together chapter uh, 1 verse 13 where is the answer for our first question. Let's read together. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden band. Amen. So now let's go to verse 16 to read together. The verse 16 says the following. Let's read. He had in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was like the sun shiny in its strength. Amen. We just finished reading. Now you can sit down. So see, my brethren, what is the vision that John had in the book uh, um, in verse 13? And there he sees the Lord Jesus take possession of the seven lampstands. 
So there it is, the seven lampstands, and see Jesus in the mid in the middle of the seven lampstands. He was exactly in the position and the central position as the center of all that represents this uh, the seven lampstands represent. And we're going to talk about what the, this means in the next question. What the seven lampstands are and and what is the expression of the seven stars? This is the next question. So this was a, a contemplative vision because John was contemplating Jesus as the center, as the, in the middle of the place that he was positioned in the presence of the seven lampstands. And here, in relation to the seven lampstands, also John describes what he is, what Jesus in fact is. And what does he say? Does the Son of Man, one similar to the Son of Man. So, this was the position of the Lord Jesus that he described regarding the vision that he was having. And verse 16, it also shows the action of the Lord Jesus. Why? Because, firstly, he had in his possession on his right hand. The right hand speaks of the ministries of the Lord Jesus. He had possession there. And the action was that uh, uh, speaks of light. And so it says in verse 16, from his mouth there was a sharp sword and it was a manifest action through the revealed word. So the w sword there, the shine of this word was like uh, the sun that lights up everything. So in this vision, and the detail that is important here, like the sun is to show that the word gives life. The, sun, in the same way that sun gives light, the word also gives light. So it's the position of John that John um, places Jesus on seven lampstands in verse 13 and the seven stars in verse 16. So now, giving continuity, giving continuity, we're going to go now to our first answer to uh, so we can enter in the subject today. So finishing the Sunday School, now we are going to begin the first question to the brethren today in, for the church, in the church. So the first question is, and the second question. So the first is, and what does it mean, the seven lampstand, uh, seven gold lampstands? So you're going to search on chapter 1 of Revelations and, and the reading of the, the brethren read in chapter 1. What does it refer to uh, the seven uh, lampstands? And the second question, what is the meaning of the seven stars? Uh, this, uh, this verses that what does it mean, the seven lampstands? And what does it refer to the seven stars? Um, now, um, we're still alive, we're re interacting with the brethren. Now we're going, to give, we're going to give only time for the uh, third question. So if you have already found on chapter 1 of Revelations, where is the answer? What does it refer to the seven lampstands? And what does it mean, the seven stars? So now we're going to seek the answer. So now we're going to give an answer, information regarding this answer. So we are going to read once again the word of the Lord. We are going to read the prophecy uh, or the revelation of the book of Revelations. So for this, we're going to ask once again that the brethren stand up with the open Bible. And we are going to have the answer here. So we can read together on chapter 1, verse 20. Uh, now everybody's standing. We're going to read together. What does it mean? The seven lampstands, and what what is the meaning of the seven stars? So let us read verse twenty. Let us read all together. Let us read. The mystery of the seven stars, which you saw, in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. 
Amen. Now the church may sit down. And so here's your, our answer related to this question. The first question, the seven stars are the angels of the seven church and the seven lampstands are the seven church. So we're going to have a comment regarding this subject in a few minutes. But we're going to leave here on the board so that the brethren can work on our main question, the third question, which is the most important question, uh, is already being given to the church. Uh, the, it was given to the pastors previously. So now we're going to leave with the brand. So we're going to have a little break of 10 minutes to give this answer. So here's our answer. So invite the brethren to read the first verse of the sev of each letter. And we're going to um, so all the we're going to um, read the answers about the seven types of glorification that have already been mentioned the, the verse before. So we're going to repeat to the burden. We're, you're going to see at the beginning of each letter which one of the seven letters beginning at the chapter two of Revelations ending on chapter three. So the first, the beginning. The, be the, the beginning of the verse of each letter. So you identify the titles of glorification of the Lord Jesus. And you will relay those titles of glorification that we have on, on, on the left hand side. We're going to mention to you because some of the image, images may not be very clear to the brethren. So on the left side, there, those are the verse, chapter uh, 2, verse 1, chapter 2, verse 8, two, 2, verse 12, 2, 18. 3 verse 1 and 3 verse 7 and 3 verse 14 so that the brethren may identify at the beginning of each letter the type of glorification of the Lord Jesus and then later on the board on, this, on the right side you will find on chapter 1 and you will find as well the relationship of those titles on chapter 1 when they are mentioned there so you are going to have 10 minutes to work uh, on this subject and soon after we will come back and if it, 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 I want to give information to you before we finish here that those that want to do the work alone with the church they can uh, they, uh, wait on the screen and those that don't want they can uh, keep uh, connected with us so we may during this 10 minutes give you the information so in 10 minutes we'll be back So now the brethren will wait so we can have the answer to the question for those that chose to keep with us during these 10 minutes. I want to greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. We we're going to work with the brethren that didn't turn off the satellite. Naturally, it was a choice because the pastors that are in their church that want to discuss with their own church the subject that is being placed here which is here on the screen they have 10 minutes in the same way that we were going to have 10 minutes we're going to have 10 minutes here together with the brethren that decided not to turn off their, their, the satellite so we're going to work here together with the brethren that didn't turn off the, the satellite so Let's see what we understand here. So the first seven letters, the Church of Asia, those are the letters that have been directed to those churches when John was he was uh, in the island of Patmos in prison. So at the end, we're going to show a couple of slides about Patmos. So just to give an information of the location of the cities of the time and also the city of Apatimus, actually the city of Ephesus, like uh, what it is today. So I'm going to give a couple of uh, physical aspects, geographic, and a couple of information. But now, let's go to the essence, what interests us. Interest us. The letter was directed towards a, peer, a historic period and also prophetic of the church that has its beginning and the Pentecosts 
In the Pentecost, the church gives its uh, it starts, and it, the first period is called the period of Ephesus. There's no division of each letter during this period of 2,000 years. There is no division in a chronological order. The division is prophetic. One letter does not cancel the next. For example, when you see here the letter of Ephesus, then we enter into the letter of Smyrna, the events in the church in the period of Ephesus. The events, they continue, continue happening here in Smyrna. And what happens in Smyrna continues in Pergamon. So there is a sequence in which each letter is interconnected and, and this is the existence of the church. And this existence we consider it as a historical and prophetic uh, history. So let me give you an example. So historical. Historically speaking, we have emphasis the beginning of Christianity, the, of the Christian church. Actually, every measure of our time is based on the Christian measure of that begins with the birth of the Lord Jesus. So this time is measured. So how many fires in the Roman Empire, for example, in Pergamos there was uh, marriage was distorted. Constantine Edita, Edita of Milan for the persecution that the church was going through, uh, the church of Smyrna, and Smyrna comes from the word myrrh, this speaks of uh, suffering. It, this persecution finishes and now it enters a Christianity that we can say with uh, un un political universality. So then there was this marriage that was not of this period, it was a political marriage. The Christians now had to be part of the government of the Roman Empire. So it was a famous uh, Milan um, treaty. So now we're going to see other aspects in Sardis. For example, the Reformation, religious Reformation of the 16th century. So every, each period is marked with chronological signs, historical. But what is important for the church is that on those signs, chronological store and marks and signs um, connected with time is the most important, which is the prophetic. So let, let's go through this quickly. So the prophetic is located right out of the bat in the names, the wonderful names that was given to the Lord Jesus which are connected. It's interesting here. They're connected to the first chapter. All the titles, the glorious titles are here in every period of the church from the beginning of the revelations to the Pentecost until its rapture, his rapture. There's always an emphasis to each glorious title of the Lord Jesus. So let's go here. So we have the first verse. The mystery of the seventh church that we saw on my right hand and the seven lampstands, the seven stars, and uh, the seven angels, the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Exactly what is described here in the first chapter. On two, one, we have this reference that was here. 120, already speaking of the church. I think that this reference is here on the chapter 1, verse 20. And this one is on 2, verse 1, which is... So each first verse of each letter is referenced in the first chapter of uh, the glorious titles of the Lord Jesus. The glorious title of the Lord Jesus, which is the first chapter is also 
mentioned on the first verse of each letter. So those are seven letters. So there is an emphasis to each first verse that are here that already started in the first chapter. So let's go back here. So second reference. I'm the Alpha and the Omega in the beginning and the end. This is what um, the, the one who was, who is, and to, is to come. So now we go to the second letter and see it. And to the angel of the church in the Smyrna write, these things says to the first and the last who was dead and came to life. It's the same reference. The, it speaks of the beginning of the end of all things. So the word is Pergamon means and uh, is a distorted marriage perversion in the marriage. It says here, it has on his right hand, the first chapter, verse 16, and had in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. So now let's go. Oh, the church of the Pagan, and the angel of the church of Pagan right. This thing says, he who was has the sharp two-edged sword. So, see, there's a sword with two edges. So now the church of Teatira, we have a reference here. This reference of 2.18, which is the first verse, you will find on, on chirp, on, also in the first chapter. So, you see, my brother, each letter, and the first verse of each letter, it mentions the wonderful title of the Lord Jesus, that was already on the first chapter in the book. So when we open the book of Revel open up the book of Revelation, those are all the references. And each one of those references in are they are on the first verse of each letter that here are. So let's go once again. The church of Tiatira and to the angel of the church of Tiatira write, this thing says the Son of the of God who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. So now chapter 14, 15, and his head was, hair was like that white wool and then the snow and the eyes was like a flame of fire and his feet are like the shining brass. So now let's finish here and Sardis, the same thing. What is the, uh, what is the glorious title of the Lord Jesus? The one that has seven spirits of the Lord and seven stars. So it says here, grace and peace. The one who is, who was, and is to come, the seven spirits are in the presence of God in, on the throne. And uh, second to last is Philadelphia. The one who was dead and is alive, man, is alive forever more. I mean, for the church and Philadelphia, there was in the church, it says, is holy. So the same words that are mentioned here. It has the keys. You see, it has the keys of life and death. It's the keys of David. He opens and no one sh shuts. So all the power to guide all things. Death and hell, they are under the power of the Lord Jesus. And everything that opens up and closes in the life of the church. So now, the last one here, on the Church of Laodicea, and gender, um, this thing says, the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning uh, of the creation of God. So, interesting that in Laodicea, we're going to find, it, it's regarding to the end, to the beginning of creation of God. And here, it says, it begins speaking of about uh, the Alpha, which is the beginning, and Omega, which is the end. And also reminding, reminding that this last letter, the Church of Laodicea, Laodicea means, comes of two words, Laos, which means people, and Caius, which means the rights of people. So this is a prophetic moment, a historical that we are living in. So now, in closing, I want to say the following. Um, the text says to Amen because it's the end, it's the beginning of a Christian God from the end to the beginning. It's an interesting, um, just an illustration for our understanding. So now we're going to have, we're going to go back to speak to all the church that are connected with us at this moment. Jusun.
Enter. Let's let's enter. Let's enter. You can oh you can stay here. Very well. So my brother, we're here. Pastor Jesus and I discussing here. Who is going to do the commentary? But we are going to show to you what we have promised a couple uh, minutes ago to show the map of the city. So even ask you the Pastor Jesus to remain here to help out. You you can stay here. So here is the map of Europe, Asia, and Africa. And here, where was the island of Patmos when John and the seven church, the island of Patmos, it shows Greece. So there was a small island in which John was imprisoned. He was imprisoned and here we see, in fact, the church. The second church is right here, Church of Smyrna. I want to go to the church of, yeah, Patmos here. Now we can go to the next slide, where they spoke of Patmos. Now we can continue. So today, Patmos is like this. You can see the bulldozer went over. We didn't have this in the past. So here it is, Patmos at all. So this is naturally the same, same um, edifications. It looks the same, probably. So Patmos is like this, the beautiful city. Um, uh, there are a lot of tourists there. Now let's go to the next slide. So here, so here, where Patmos was in a position, one of those islands here, Naphos was here. The first letter of that was written, and then we go to the second letter. So the first letter was Ephesus. And we have already shown a couple of pictures and a couple of slides about the geographic position. So here is the position, geographic position, 103 kilometers from Ephesus. So John was there in the prison. It was the first pastor of the church of Ephesus. So let's go to the next slide. So it's interesting to the Breton. See here, this amphitheater, there are the ruins of what existed on the amphitheater, which was made in homage, not only to uh, homage to the, that the Romans made, they made many amphitheater because they were interested, uh, the, their desire was that the people in some way be distracted with uh, philosophical discussion, theological and religious, Let's go back. And here's when Paul spoke about the Anna of the Ephesus and spoke of the unknown God. And if you did, Brad, want today to the subject, the first letter of, of the Church of Ephesus, and naturally do some consideration regarding this time a historical and prophetic time, you'll see that there is a lot of connection between the letter of John geared towards the church of Ephesus. So the correspondent to the aspects, the religious aspect and philosophical of that time. So here is, so those are a few slides, the church seen from the, uh, and in the past and now, other photographs, they are here, now reproduced and improved from that period. So now, now the population seeing the ruins of the old city, and all those edifications of that time. And here is uh, the amphitheater. They placed uh, near the mountains on the bottom of the month to facilitate the constructions. So here are some writings of the time. It is something interesting here. You see that the first light uh, was lit up. So the Holy Spirit, the pastor already said, the angel of the church, the angel of the church is not the, the pastor, is not the pastor. Is the one who received the revelation and re relays the revelation. Because what matters is the light that will shine, is not the temple. 
is not a preacher, is not is, but is the light of the spirit that will uh, be born in the life of the church. So the bread will get the letter, and they read at home and study a little better the first letter. Which light was that that sh shown in Ephesus? What was the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the first letter? We can even go, oh, well, the Pastor Jesus, that we go back to the first letter so we can read the aspect related to chapter chapter 2 of the book of Revelation, the first letter. My brethren, it's important, important that we mention that Jesus directs towards this church. And I would like to ask you to open the book of Revelation, chapter 2. And we're going to follow the expression of the Lord when he mentions verse 2 of chapter 2. We can follow, it's still sitting, the reading. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And more, continuing. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this agent you that you have left your first love. Remember this, therefore, from where you have fallen, and repeat and do not and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from this place unless you repeat, repent but this you have that you he, hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans which I also hate he who has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the church to him who overcomes I, w I will give to eat from the tree of life which is in the midst of the presence of God. So the letter speaks of the first days of the creation when Adam and Eve, they enter into the scene of disobedience and the Lord placed a sword, a flaming sword on the path of the tree of life. So now that he opens and he says the church now we have will be able to enter it. and the promise for the church is that he will allow right so the the one who overcomes i will give you the right to eat the fruit uh, of the tree of life there is a mid the middle of the paradise of god so he goes through the flaming sword which is the word and he will enter into the paradise my brethren the references i could have told you the brethren, uh, this first letter, like all the others, they uh, require a consideration of even five Sunday schools. But we're going to go quickly over them. But we're going to go back because there is a lot of stuff to be said. But there is a de detail that is very important, which is to understand that the angel of the church, when he directs to, is is directing to an, an operation of the Holy Spirit and the Word up until this point is very interesting in the original the word that that mentions it speaks of the angel is the word of those that are working on a special work for the king and this word is is related to the messenger agent in the administration of the businesses of the world of the business of the father in the world my brother, it's very interesting. So the angel is a pastor. Hey, wait a minute. The angel is a pastor when he is receiving revelation. And when he's delivering the, the revelation, he's not an angel when he's saying what he wants. When he's on his, his own reason. The angel of the Lord is a pastor is just a title. The angel is the one who has a ministry. The ministry that was given by the Holy Spirit. So he went, he was called for ministry. It's not a minister, it's not an angel. It's just a pastor. He has a title of pastor that you can find anywhere. Anyone can have it. There's nothing wrong with that. But here, the prophetic moment, 
is exactly this, and we're bringing to the bread what needs to be what is necessary for this time, reminding that these seven letters that was geared towards those seven churches at this period, those are prophetic letters for time. Today, from the top of the mountain, what happened in the valley? The time comes and it's coming up the mountain. Today we are at the top of the mountain, at the highest point of the mountain. We can see a history that began from the valley. And we can see something that is interesting. The letters, the seven letters, the seven church, they don't mean that uh, only those seven church existed. But no, and also that this was the first church. They were not. The first church was the church of Jerusalem. The other church that existed was the, the church of Antioquia, Antioquia, where the Christians for the first time, the Christians have been called Christians. Then we see a church that was established in Jerusalem where the desire was to reach the Jews. And the church Antioquia was to reach the Gentiles. And now, now the the concern is that there were the letters in Coloss Colossus in, in the other church of Thessalonics and the church of the city of Corinthians, Corinthians and there were other churches but the Holy Spirit calls John prepares John in order for him to write those seven because he knew those seven letters so he takes advantage that uh, clearly, the understanding of John regarding those church in order to to relay what was necessary, a group of information. So reminding the following, what was written for that time, what we see the ruins here is the same time for us, because for God, the time is in the light. So in the light is the uh, God's space. So in our space is our time that we live. The God is, is in light, where there is no time, where there is eternity, where He sees from the top all things. He doesn't see like we are seeing. He sees with the eyes of the Spirit. Seeing from a point, He sees everyone that is, there are at the bottom. We are at, at a distance here. There are on another distance there. But for him, there is, it doesn't exist this relativity. It is an, a present action, which is the action of the verb, which is, is energy. Which, when I speak of energy, a human speaking energy, where I speak of energy, which is the ex Greek expression that speaks of energy as a product of God, it's action of the verb, what is not from man, it comes from eternity, which is the light that comes down is the same light that guides man towards eternity. It's interesting that uh, the Bible says that uh, science says that light conducts matter, and they didn't know. And if we apply the theory of Einstein, we're and we are going to be guided by the light, and we'll be taken to eternity. We we don't have to be concerned about physics or Einstein. It was an extraordinary scientist, but. We're just placing here in a, in a way that helps you to understand. So, my brethren, I just want to remind you that yes, we have a, a wonderful meeting with the teachers of Sunday school. It was was surprising the number of people that appeared from every everywhere, and we want to send our embrace, a fraternal embrace, and the joy of our heart for being able to count on those sisters because in truth our great concern is geared towards the children to those that need to understand the world according to the way it needs to be seen like I see the world my brethren the, the world is not seeing the world in the way they need to see so the teachers they began and now they have an, a greater understanding they, have always been faithful. They always worked and on behalf of their children, a few with little resources and others with more resources, but 
In fact, the teaching is now being directed. We're going to have a biblical institute, which will admonish the sisters not for what they need to say, but, but what they need to be, and how effective and the efficacy of what they need to to understand. Not all, only about the understanding, but from a fix, efficacy comes the teaching. It's not about the the knowledge. The knowledge is important, but the efficacy is the the fundamental thing that the, everything that the Lord does. And we told you yesterday that we gave to you um, a series of questions. So read the text of Revelations. We're going to leave here later on the board here so the, so the sisters may be able to copy and those that were not here, that everyone received, even here, at least here in the region, uh, a series of questions. The questions are here from Revelations 19.8. And 17.4 and 6, from 4 to 6, identify the designations that were given to the faithful and unfaithful church. So we just read the text. The unfaithful church is here and the faithful church is here. So the answer I said that we are going to give today, but we're not going to give today. We're going to give on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, as... Um, 7.45, we're going to have a satellite. First, the sisters that meet on, on Wednesday, they do all the work that is done, a prayer opening. They have an instruction for, about the silent prayer. You do everything. And then the satellite will enter at 7.45 to give the answers. And we will have a conversation with the sister for the first time via satellite. Uh, and the sisters as well as the women that will give a little space for the teachers to absorb all the teaching that is being given on Sunday school. Why? Because they go to give classes and they don't, don't watch the Sunday school. They are going to begin now to understand what was taught and was given on Sunday school they will learn with this women on Wednesday. So this is the word, a final word, reminding, I want to register here, the President Pastor Badger, his wife, um, Sister Rosa, and also our brother Manuel Silva from Ghana and Africa. He's here with us a few days. And we also have Sister Elsa, who is always here. She's going, she's going back to Brasilia. She already said that she, uh, told, want to say to her brother that she's going back. Now we have a baptism here, the city of New Mexico and the city in, of Jabaruna. We have a uh, 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 while for baptism and Sister Sarah who is here with us. And I want to make a special reference to the, the farm El Dorado in Tocantins and uh, municipality of Guarismã. Isn't it? it? Yeah, I think it, that's that's the name. But uh, Brother Luis Castro Nayoni, those wonderful people that are not far away physically. Uh, in fact, they are away spiritually, but they are connect. They are close spiritually, although they are far away physically. They are and. Uh, and token to our uh, embrace not only to them but to everyone that are listening to us in far away places but the word is penetrating we're, we're getting great results with the Sunday school invite your bread your your friends so that they may come and hear the word of the Lord in the Sunday school so I want to thank uh, the presence of everyone and wish everyone the peace of the Lord